Okay, so you can play with, with color variations to your type just endlessly. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the progression of color that I added. And I, I like how it looks on the three different backgrounds. Just the type. You know, I'm probably still need to work with my spot illustration a little bit. And then I can notice which one do I like it kind of the best on. Middle gray, black, or white. And this is largely just a, a point of taste, right? Because you want it to be effectively readable on all three. But I like the lighter end. So I'm thinking whatever background I choose, I think I want it to be lighter than 50% gray. And then, then my, my work will, will show up in, in a way that I enjoy. So the, the last things I could probably add to my type if I wanted to that some of you might want is what's called a drop shadow, right? Because so far I've only shown you strokes and fills. But a drop shadow is like a gradated uh, outside shape. So drop shadows and outer glows. And you can do them as a layer style that can be turned on and off and that you can adjust the opacity on. And what's nice about drop shadows is they're directional. So this is the first effect that's actually directional that I'm using on my type. So if I zoom in on the G, you can see it, right? And even then on the white, it helps because it shows that white stroke a little bit because the drop shadow is underneath that. The layers of your effects are as layered here. And you can change that using the little up and down arrows. So if I wanted my drop shadow to go above a stroke, I could do that. All right, so let's look at these effects. I want a lot of noise in my drop shadow, like everything else. I want it to be maybe a little, ah, that distance is actually pretty good. Let's see if I try a spread. That's going to keep it sharp and make it bigger, whereas size will soften it out. These are kind of arbitrary terms they choose, but the same as in Photoshop. So size will will disperse it. And then if I want that to be soft, but a little bit closer to the letter form itself, I can mess with the distance and the size. But the less the distance, then the less the angle matters. So it's kind of tricky to get what you think looks best. But these are the factors that matter for drop shadows. And the noise gives me that kind of speckled effect. And then it's set to darken anything that's under it because it's set to be multiply. So let's see. If I like it with the drop shadow or not, right? I can always turn it on and off. And it does just set it down a little bit in a nice way. So I think this is my final color solution, right? So I'm gonna turn my sketch all the way on, full opacity. Close to full opacity so that you can really get a sense of what my type solution is. And I'm just going to be picky, make it match my other. So I'm going to take an image adjustment just to my sketch levels, and I'm going to dampen the 
shadows a little bit. There we go. All right. So I feel now that I'm getting everything I can out of my type. And that's the first goal of this assignment. That's the new skill set to make sure your type is just as, as strong as possible on its own. And now we'll, we'll play with the background and putting it together with our spot illustration and working on the full poster. So how do I uh, save this and upload it to Canvas? Well, I'm just gonna simply save it as a PSD at this point. It's important to kind of merge things together as you have finalized them, right? So you can either merge the layers or you can just put them all in folders together. So I have my final color type there. I have my final black type there. And I have my mock-up sketch there. So those are the steps we've gone through so far, right? So now I'm gonna turn on my spot illustration in its finished form from assignment seven and think, okay, so if, if this is the poster on a white background, do I like it? And no, I think there needs to be something other than just a white background. How is it on a gray background? Well, especially with the spot illustration having so much contrast from white to black, I don't think the middle gray background is particularly exciting for the type. The type seems kind of washed out. And on the black background, yes, the type works well, but it, you, you miss a lot of the nuance in the type. You know, you don't have the drop shadow anymore and it, and it makes the, the white stroke maybe a little bit too strong, like it's glowing. So I think I want a background that's between the 100% white and the 50% gray. I want a background that's lighter than 50% gray. So then I can start doing a Google search and finding them, uh, just looking for interesting background text. Now this goes back to our compositing skills, right? So if I just search background textures in a Google image search, I'll get 582 million results, right? I need to limit that because I'm working at high resolution. I want definitely the ones that are as large as possible. So I want to go to tools. Hmm. I want to go to images. Sorry, I wasn't on image search yet. And then I want to go to tools. But then I can also maybe just look for ones that are high resolution, right? That's part of their tag. And I can look for ones, these are all just different tags that are, hmm, so many different options. Red <laughs> versus I think I want something that's lighter, right? So Watercolor paper is kind of a standard for me, but let's go for the different modern variations. Let's just see what they have in mind with a modern tag. And this one's quite nice. Remember, I don't have to take anything just as is. I can use all of my digital art skill to change its color, to change its texture. I can overlap several on top of each other. So what I don't like is that a lot of these, they say they're high res and they're large, but they might have watermarks because they're licensable, you know, like stock photos. So you always want to view them at full resolution. And sure enough, you see that? That annoying little deposit photos. 
watermark, right? Because Google is showing you everything on the internet and that's mostly stuff that's for sale. So we want the free stuff. We want the stuff that other uh, designers have scanned in and offered for free. And so what we can try to do with the tools is limit its size to large and then limit its usage rights to Creative Commons. And this one's beautiful, but it's, it says licensable because Creative Commons doesn't mean necessarily that you get to use it. It just allows for that possibility. And I'm going for something pretty simple here. Just kind of a, an authentic kind of paper texture so it, it looks a little bit like flash art in a tattoo parlor. But then when I look at them, I want to make sure when I view the image sometimes they automatically download that there is no watermark there. And that one looks pretty good. So I've already downloaded that one. You want to make sure they're Close to a thousand pixels. I don't like that one so much. It's too horizontal. This one is a really nice resolution. I can always change the color, right? It's pretty horizontal, but that's a, a good image resource. And then this one is really big and I have high hope for because I like the different color variations in it. So I'm going to open the image in a new tab. And nothing's happening. I'm going to click on it, see what happens. There we go. And I'm able to check it out. And yeah, that looks like the ticket. So let's start with that one. And then I've also saved some others, right? Once you've been doing digital art for a while, you're going to start saving lots of textures for yourself that are good assets that you're able to just use as backgrounds. So if I stretch that to fill my poster, and maybe Uh, fit it just short so I actually give myself a border because a border is part of a poster even if it's just a white border there it's centered I think I want a little bit more space on the top and bottom a little extra space on the bottom it's called a weighted bottom in design for my poster. And then I'm going to move it behind everything. And how do you know you have a good background? Well, you like it more than you like the white, gray, or black, right? Your other options. But then you don't have to just live with it. So there are other backgrounds. Like this one, I can bring this in. And this has kind of a gradient to it. This is a tobacco stained paper, something that kind of looks like an old tattoo parlor. They smoke cigars and all the, the paper on the walls with their designs has been. discolored over time. I'm going to line it up. I can always crop down to it later, but I just want to get a sense of it right now. 